Finally, I've got a Z Flip 4. Yes, we do say Z in this country, but as an iPhone user, I have many, many thoughts. I've never had a Galaxy Z Flip, but I've regretted not having one, to be honest, because I'm a bit bored of phones like this. So as great as the Nothing Phone 1, the Pixel 6a, and the, well, my favorite iPhone ever, the iPhone 13 mini, as great as these are, they're really boring. They're just rectangular slabs of aluminium and glass. Where else do you go with a phone? Well, actually, as it turns out, you go here, you do this. This isn't a new thing. Flip phones have been around for many, many years, but Samsung has been the brand who have put their money where their mouth is and stuck with it. They resurrected the Flip. And bearing in mind that I'm normally an iPhone user, you're probably gonna wanna know what it's like to go from something like this to something like this. The Z Flip 4 is not a cheap phone. In the UK, it costs £999, which places it firmly in flagship territory. But what do you get for that money? Firstly, it comes with the Snapdragon 8 Plus 1 chip, and yes, finally, in the UK, it appears that we get that version. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, and storage can either be 128, 256, or 512 gig. The folding display is a 6.7 inch AMOLED with an adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate and 1200 nits of peak brightness. There's a second display on here as well, which is known affectionately as the cover display, which if I press the button there, it will come on. This is used when the flip is flopped, closed, whatever you call it. And it's also an AMOLED display, which measures 1.9 inches. And as expected, the Flip 4 runs Android 12 with Samsung's One UI slapped on top of it. So arguably, those are flagship specs. We are indeed off to a very good start. When it comes to design, the Flip 4 is a bigger phone than I was expecting. Even when it's closed like that, it does look fairly chunky and it really does make its presence known in your pocket. When you open it, it gets even bigger or taller, more specifically. This is a very tall phone. If I compare it against the Nothing Phone 1, which is about the same size roughly or almost exactly as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you can see there the Flip 4 is really tall. That's fine, it doesn't bother me too much, but if you don't like the sort of phones where you have to do these kind of finger gymnastics to get to the top and bottom of the screen, it might be a little bit too long. I do love this blue version that I've got, and I do think the whole thing feels very premium. I think that's partly thanks to these shiny bezels, but mainly the build quality. If you've never held a Flip, I hadn't. Before this one, I'd never held one of these devices. If you never have, one of the first things you notice is how robust this thing feels. I've inadvertently tested its robustness already myself by dropping it on the kitchen floor, but there's not a single scratch or dent on this thing. It's seems to be a bit of a tank. As for the hinge, it's reassuringly stiff. It's very satisfying to use actually, but it's not too stiff. You know, it's, it's pretty smooth in operation and there's nothing more satisfying than going, you'll find yourself doing that quite a lot. The only thing I would say is that it's not particularly easy to open one-handed. I've seen some people flip open their flip, as the name would suggest, with one hand and I've got to be careful because I don't want to throw it into this 5,000 pound camera setup in front of me, but it's very difficult to do that. I don't know if over time the hinge gets a bit looser, possibly. This really is a two-handed flip, I think. So in terms of specs and design, I think Samsung so far has completely nailed the Flip 4 experience for someone like me who's normally an iPhone user, but there is an elephant in the room. So until technology gives us some kind of answer for this, any phone that does this, any phone that has a foldable screen is gonna have a crease in the middle of it. Now the presence of the crease on the Samsung Flip series has been debated to the nth degree, but this is my first experience of it. And you can't not see it. It's noticeable pretty much all of the time, no matter what the lighting conditions are, no matter where it's placed on the table, you know that crease is there. And you can certainly feel it as you're using the phone. Obviously that is most kind of apparent when you're using your thumb to scroll up and down, but there's no getting away from that crease. It is there. It's it's visible, and for some people, that will be an eyesore. Now, Samsung tells us that the Flip 4 can survive 200,000 folds before it starts to fail. Now, roughly translated, that's about 100 folds every day for five years. 
which sounds okay to me. So some people hate the crease, some people are indifferent about the crease, and some people put up with it even though they really want to see some improvements. Me? It doesn't actually bother me. So a little bit like the notch on Apple's MacBooks, I've always said that does not matter at all. This little notch at the top of the screen, if you're spending more time looking at that than doing your work, you're not busy enough. This is a little bit different because you can feel it regularly, but as you start using this phone, as you get used to it, and as you get into the tasks that you're using the phone for, whether it be scrolling through social media, checking your email, watching stuff, the crease gradually disappears. It just becomes part of the the phone, and it's not a big deal. More importantly, you can't see it at all if you're watching YouTube and content like this. If you've got it in landscape mode, and actually to be fair, in portrait mode, you can't see it when you're watching content. If you could, that would be a different thing. That would really annoy me, but I'm already enjoying owning a flippable phone. It's just different, it's interesting, and thanks to that build quality and those 200,000 promised folds, it feels pretty bulletproof. And I do love that cover display. I think that's great. The widgets are genuinely useful, and I love the fact you can customize it with your own photos. It's stuff like this that makes the Flip 4 such a refreshing device to use after using an iPhone for so long. But how does it perform? So onto performance, and thankfully I can keep this section brief. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the UK version of this phone comes with the Snapdragon chip. This is very good news. I was worried that it was gonna come with the Exynos, which is a terrible, terrible chocolate fire guard of a chip. It doesn't. The one that I have got, I've checked it with a, an app that tells you what the chip is inside this. That has confirmed it is the Snapdragon chip. Now that's great news because it means this is a very speedy phone. And once you've removed all of the crap that Samsung still insists on putting on these phones, you can fly through One UI pretty happily. It's not stuttered, it's not crashed, it's a joy to use. Onto the camera, and I'm afraid it's a bit of a mixed bag. The main camera system features a 24 millimeter wide and a 123 degree ultra wide, both of which are 12 megapixels. You can shoot 4K video at up to 60 frames per second and 1080p video at up to 240 frames per second. And you can even use that cover display as a monitor if you want to use the main cameras as a selfie cam. The actual selfie cam that sits in here is a 10 megapixel camera, and that is also capable of shooting 4K video. But let's quickly focus on the stills camera. It's a bit annoying, I'm afraid. In the right conditions, and particularly indoors, the Flip 4 does produce some very nice images. It also copes very well with extremely dark conditions with the night mode, but take the Flip 4 out into a bright, sunny day, and it makes an absolute hash of most scenes. Now, I know Samsung is known for its oversaturated images, but if you look at some of these examples, it just absolutely ruins the sky, it just overblows everything. They just need to tone it down a little bit. What I am enjoying very much is flex mode, which is where you basically angle the phone like that, place it on a surface, and you have this kind of built-in tripod for your camera. Now, if, like me, you produce quite a bit of short-form vertical content for things like TikTok and Instagram, the Flip 4 is actually an awesome content creation device. And since I've had it, this has been the main camera I've used for short-form video, thanks to this flex mode. Now, there aren't many apps that use flex mode apart from the camera, but things like YouTube do. So if you're watching a YouTube video, you get the YouTube video on the top of the screen and then the comments on the bottom of the screen. And there's one or two other apps that give you the same sort of thing where you have the control controls here and the content here. I like that. Again, it's an interesting use of a smartphone, and I found myself using flex mode much more than I thought I would. It's very early days for me with this Z Flip 4. I do need it for longer to give you a fully rounded opinion, which is why I'm gonna return in three months time to give you a proper longer term opinion of this phone. But my initial thought is that it is a fascinating alternative to something like the iPhone, and even something like the Pixel 6a. I just wish other manufacturers would be a little bit braver, just like Samsung, and make phones that do things like this. They can keep these phones in their lineup, that's no problem at all. But to have something that is interesting in a world of very similar smartphones is really refreshing. If you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I talk about the Nothing Phone 1 and why I think it's better in the UK than the S22 Ultra. You do not want to miss that one.